Yo, welcome back to Deck Check. My name is Ganesh. Let's take a look at the top 10 most meta-defining cards in CDH that were printed in 2023, starting at 10 and working all the way up to number 1, and have fun doing it. Let's get started. A creature with play patterns reminiscent of Spellseeker, Hoarding Broodlord takes our number 10 spot. Just like with Spellseeker, this card lets you chain together a collection of instants and sorceries to win the game, usually starting out with Saw in Half to get two more copies, and then Sacrifice or Burnt Offering to get more mana. The other copy will then usually get a Tutor, Underworld Breach, or some other win comp. Did we really need another green creature tutor? Well, we have our number 9 spot, Invasion of Ikoria, showing up in almost every green deck. It's less vulnerable to instant and sorcery counter magic, puts the card straight to the field, and can give you an upside if you're able to kill the battle. So very good in general. And a quick reminder, if you like this sort of content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and will help this channel succeed. Thank you. All right, a new universal tutor that is actually good isn't something we see often, but at number eight, Beseech the Mirror is that card. I'll link my full review of this card in the description below. This card appears more in turbo decks, but man is it good there. It can be even more mana efficient than Demonic Tutor depending on the CMC of the card that you're getting. And even if you're grabbing a 2 mana spell like Thoracle, it's the same total amount of mana as Demonic Tutor. One of the best graveyard hate pieces we've seen in a while, mainly because our number 7 Agatha Soul Cauldron isn't just a hate piece. This card has three very powerful ways to use it. First, of course, we can exile any card from a graveyard to stop those pesky underworld breach decks. Second, we can exile creatures with relevant abilities to give our own creatures those abilities. For example, Ranger Captain of Eos's Silence effect is very powerful. Third, this card enables a lot of combos with Walking Ballista, and Francisco loves this card too. The one thing we don't want happening to our legendary spells is them getting countered. What better way to stop that than with our number 6, Delighted Halfling. A very efficient mana dork at 1 mana, this also gives us the upside of making legendary spells uncounterable, like our commanders, planeswalkers, and sometimes other legendaries like the One Ring. Blind Obedience and Gorilla Shaman are two cards that have seen play in multiple formats. This card is like their baby, at number 5 we have Dauntless Dismantler. <laughs> Combining the artifact's tapped hate with an instant speed artifact destruction ability makes this card extremely good against any deck that runs mana rocks, as well as any deck that uses Dockside Extortionist or Tide Spout Holebreaker loops, although sometimes they, those can just bounce this card. A happy little halfling takes our number 4 spot. Lotho's cheap CMC and powerful treasure generation makes him a great fit in most decks in Orzhov colors. Not to say not too much to say about him other than that he's a very great value piece that can generate a ton of treasures if players don't worry about it too much. Now on to our honorable mentions. There were so many great cards printed in 2023, we couldn't really stop at 10, so we'll have a few honorable mentions here. A solid stacks piece with healthy toughness, uh, Boromir is striking our first honorable mention spot. This card shuts off all those pesky free mana rocks like Mox Diamond, Chrome Mox, Mox Opal, as well as all the free counter magic in the format. With Lavinia, this can be a little bit of a double-edged sword, as sometimes it can turn off opponent's counter magic against someone else's win attempt, but Boromir doesn't have that problem since he can sacrifice himself. Uh, this card can also save your creatures from some board wipes giving them indestructible. Another extremely solid creature takes our second honorable mention, Fairy Mastermind. While not as meta-defining as some of the other cards on this list, it nonetheless provides extremely solid value and card drop. It also provides protection against Thassa's Oracle win attempts, as you can pay 4 mana and force players to draw a card, causing them to lose if their library is empty. Split Second isn't something we see printed very often, simply because it is so powerful and uninteractive. That power brings us to our third honorable mention, Legolas's Quick Reflexes. This card can cause a huge tempo swing because it can cause two for one kind of removal and you can give a creature hexproof and then tap it somehow to kill something else on the board. I expect to see this card more, especially if creature combos become more common. <laughs> now don't get mad, Atraxa is an honorable mention. 
We know she's good. If we were to give her a number, it would definitely be at least in the top five, as she has proven herself to be consistently one of the best decks in the format. However, since she's basically only a commander of one deck, it felt a little weird ranking her among these other staples that can see play in almost any deck. Her extremely strong ETB ability lets players go on average plus four or plus five on card advantage, making her the premier food chain deck in CEDH. Same as with the Traxa, we know Talion's good. If we were to give them a number, it'd also be in the top five. But this is another card that's good as a standalone commander, as well as fitting in the 99 of deck, so it's a little bit out of place among these other staples. That said, Talion is a very, very powerful draw engine that holds its own both as a commander and in the 99. It can very easily run away with card advantage if left alone for too long. Plus, it pressures life totals being an evasive attacker and having life loss on its ability. That brings us to our number three. Remember how good Flash Hulk used to be? While not quite as crazy as the card Flash, which is now banned, at number three we have Born Upon the Wind. This card enabling wins at Flash speed makes it much riskier for players to attempt wins in general, since if someone has a Born, they can just attempt a win on top of your own win attempt. Extremely powerful card, and look to see this pop up in more and more lists. One of the most powerful creatures we've ever seen in CDH. At number two, we have Orcish Bowmasters. While this seems fairly innocent at first glance, the abundance of draw effects in the format means this card provides huge value in almost every game it's able to stick on the board. This card doesn't single dip, it doesn't double dip, it triple dips. It's extremely efficient removal at flash speed, and acts as a stacks piece, preventing opponents from playing good low health creatures into it. And it pressures life totals with an orc army token that gets big fast as well as, as its own pings. The strongest and most meta warping card of 2023, in my opinion, is the One Ring. This card enables every single deck in the format access to a very powerful draw engine. This in turn has slowed down the meta a lot. For example, Turbo decks previously would be completely out of the game after their first win attempt was stopped, especially if they don't have some sort of other draw engine like Rhystic or Remora. However, with the addition of One Ring, many decks that lacked draw can stay in the game and keep drawing interaction and threats to prolonged games. And that'll do it for this video. Thanks very much to my patrons, JR and Matt Tang. And uh, definitely like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the Discord linked in the description if you're interested in finding a like-minded community. Thank you.